Hey chatters, so we're gonna vibe code a little bit with GitHub Copilot. I don't actually use this one that often, but it's 10 bucks a month, so it's pretty affordable, and they've thrown some limits on me, but at least when I first got started, it was pretty generous with what they were giving. And they did just add this agent mode and the ability to add something called MCP servers, which are these sort of agentic interfaces you can use for data or tools. So instead of me having to first do this, then do that, then do this, right? You just give it the toolbox and it decides what to use. So I'm going back through an older Obsidian plugin that I created called Neurovox. Neurovox is focused on making your Obsidian vault into something you can talk to and transcribe very easily. And I remember someone asked for me to put another model in there called DeepGram. So I figured this would be a good way to show off some agentic capabilities and walk through what's happening. Before that though, I went and installed what I needed and tried to build this application and I got all these errors. So I figured to start, why don't we just take these errors and we're going to stick this in without any context to GitHub Copilot and let's see what it comes up with and how it approaches the problem. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to load up its context with the information it needs to know. Based on these errors, right, it knows more or less what files it's supposed to read. So our main.ts file, our timer modal, and now it's searching the rest of the code base to find other examples that it should be looking at in order to help solve these problems. So let's give it a second to do that. Okay, so it found some issues. Timer modal expects this, but it's being passed differently. Interactor expects this, but it's being called no arguments. Both are related to the same issue. So it thinks it's found the issue. There's some conflicts. And so now you can see it's actually going through file by file. And you can see this plus means it added two things. And the minus means it deleted three things. And you can see here in the file that you can actually see where these, they're called diffs, are being made. So I've hit some sort of limit. They want to try to make it so it won't just go forever. So I'm going to say continue. This is pretty typical. And so now it's asking me to run this command. I'm not sure I want to run this command, but let's, uh, yeah, it's not even going to work. So a lot of these agentic coders, they think they're in a specific environment. I'm in PowerShell right now, not like normal command terminal or Linux. So this is not actually going to work. Okay, it's just asking me to build. <laughs> so that was dumb. I'll just try to build it myself. So if I had to build it, it would have access to this little space. So it would be able to see if it worked. And we can see here it built just fine. So we should be able to start up the application now in my Obsidian. So let's head over there and just make sure that it's working. So here we are in the vault. You see we have Neurovox here, place for API keys place to do recording stuff, post-processing, summarizing, whatever. So that worked already, some good news. So we've got this built. So now I wanna take and add a new provider in here for people to use called DeepGram. Back in GitHub Copilot, you can see that I've added a special little MCP server that I haven't tried yet. So we're gonna see if this works, but it's called Context7. I learned about this. It keeps up-to-date documentation on pretty much everything. And so I'm hoping they have documentation on DeepGram, which is the other transcription service I want to add to this. So I'm going to come back here and it should be able to do this. So I'm going to say, use your Context7 tool to research DeepGram transcription and then come up with a plan to integrate it into this Obsidian Aware plugin. So first it's searching the code base, <laughs> already not a great sign. You can add all kinds of MCP servers, so you could have just done perplexity, but I've heard a lot of good stuff about this one, so I want to see how it does. Right now it's still just looking at the code base. Oh, here we go. So continue. So it looks like it's just fetching the web pages. It's not even using the MCP, which, okay, that's fine. That works too, right? If it can just go out on the web and find it, I don't have to get fancy. Okay, so it came back with some stuff. Let's see, it's doing a comparison of advantages, the pricing, which I'm not sure this is up to date, but we're gonna have to check that. 
some comparisons and then how we're going to do it. And this looks pretty good. I have set this up to hopefully add folks, other providers pretty easily. So it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, we got a midge with, we got a midge butt with us guys coming to enjoy the vibes. Okay, so we have a pretty good plan here. Again, I need to go look this stuff up. I uh, question it. But the integration plan looks pretty good. We're getting the dependency from DeepGram. We're going to put it in our AI adapter pattern, add it throughout the UI, and add all the models. I'm going to get rid of this. I think I'm just going to have two models. How it's going to get into the settings, the transcription support, so how it'll stream it. Advanced features. I'm not sure about this one. I'm going to, let's say, okay, so we're going to download that. I'm going to give it this, this feedback here. And you can see again, it's trying to do this terminal command. It's not correct for my environment. So just be aware of that and maybe don't have it run its own commands, especially if you're a newbie. Copilot really likes to use this a lot, the summarizing conversation history. It makes sense. They're trying to save money. So I'm sure what they're doing, right, is they take the conversation so far, they compact it so that it's a summary of the conversation so far in some sort of structured format so it can continue from where it left off and so that you're not getting those token limits super high. Okay, it's starting to work. You can see it add deep gram in here. We're just going to let this run for a little bit. So the funny thing about these agentic coding solutions is like you actually end up just waiting around a lot. I'm a little concerned about people thinking you'll be able to do parallel stuff. You definitely can, not with this, but you think about this, like it can't really be doing a lot of this stuff in parallel. It needs to do one thing after the other. But I don't know, I guess some things like that it lined up, it could have done this step and a couple other steps probably at the same time. But yeah, I just don't know. It, what if it goes further than it's supposed to or it messes one thing up, which messes another thing up. It just, it's not quite there yet, but... Again, this is doing a pretty good job. It's one of the slower agentic coding solutions for sure, which is wild because it's GitHub Copilot, but it's working its way through. We'll see how it comes out. Okay, good sign. Let's see if it was that easy. I'm going to go restart the vaults and then let's head in there and see if it showed up. Okay, here we are. Moment of truth. Looks like we got it there. Let's go to recording and let's go to no API configured okay one second let me go grab my API okay that doesn't seem to be working so we gotta keep a vibe in so if it wasn't working I put in the API key I don't think it validated it's supposed to send it off to make sure it actually works so that you can then choose the model it didn't happen so looks like it's compare comparing what it did in open AI and grok and on deep gram and it found the issue. Oh, we got some hard coded. Okay, there you go. They're in there now. So obviously I had to test it. I don't know if this actually works. I'm not going to do that during this video, but I just wanted to show off how GitHub Copilot works. It's one of the more accessible ones without getting too advanced, but it's also, you don't have a lot of control. Like you can't put in your own system prompt from what I can tell. As you can see, like setting up that MCP server is a little confusing. I'm not sure what I did wrong there. So in terms of your control and your ability to actually do things with it is a little bit limited, but pretty good if you're a beginner or you don't want to pay a lot of money and you know what you're doing or you're just making like quick fixes here or there. But I honestly, I don't use this one too often more for updating documentation stuff while other things are running, but it's pretty good. Definitely check it out. They're adding a lot of new stuff to make it better and better, but I would stick with some of these other solutions. We'll be going over this one for the most part. Well, thanks chatters. Hope that was helpful and I'll keep testing this and hopefully push this update so people can start using DeepGram and Neurovox.